now that we've got quality, we're going to get to the next step. He says that defining a quality, so, so we've got, now we've got being and we've got quality as the two elementary conceptions, and now he's going to get to another one. He says defining quality is only possible through reference to a correlate, right? So, uh, <coughs> Let's see, let's, let's just go through. So this, the, the claim here, I've got the claim in red, right? And it says, the occasion of the introduction of the conception of reference to a ground is the reference to a correlate, and this is therefore the next conception in order. So he's saying the next conception in order, first you've got references to a ground, and the ground is the same as quality, right? So that's a little confusing, but he says reference to a ground, which is reference to, to quality, is um, the occasion of that reference is the reference to a correlate. Right? And so he's saying that <coughs> reference to quality is also a reference to another thing. Right? Okay, so let's go through the reasoning here. Right? <coughs> he says, empirical and psychology, I'm just going to the top now, empirical psychology has established the fact that so empirical psychology, that's his evidence. Right? He's, he's, it's like we, again, we're looking into our mind and kind of thinking through the way our conceptions work. Empirical psychology established the fact that we can know a quality only by means of its contrast with or similarity to another. By contrast and agreement, a thing is referred to a correlate if this term may be used in a wider sense than usual. Right? And so this kind of makes sense, right? So we said, he says we can only know a quality by comparing or contrasting it to another quality. Right? So you don't know what blackness is if you don't have a contrast with whiteness or with some other color, right? So if, it were, if there was only blackness in the world, then obviously you wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense as a, as, a, uh, as a term, as a quality, right? And the process then of comparing or contrasting must involve then reference to a correlate. So it's his, his, his first conception of quality already implies a relationship of one quality to a second quality, at least to a second quality. Right? And that relationship of one quality to another quality is that relationship to a correlate, which is to say that if you have quality, then you have to have some relationship of one thing to another thing, at the very least, of one quality to another quality. Right? Otherwise, you couldn't have the first quality. Right? So first quality wouldn't be a quality unless there was some second thing that it could be contrasted to. Right? So that's then the way in which the conception of quality already implies within the conception itself the conception of a correlate. Right? That quality can't be singular, it has to be conceived in terms of contrast to a second thing. Right? So quality is the first thing and then the, at the very least the, that quality implies a second thing contrasting it to. Okay? And then he says at, at <coughs> At the bottom, then, reference to a correlate cannot be prescinded from reference to a ground, but reference to a ground may be prescinded from reference to a correlate. Right? Um, just keep that in mind, that we can prescind the quality from the correlate, but we can't prescind the correlate from the quality. And we're going to go into the reasoning on this later on. I don't, it's, it's, it's a little confusing right now to think about, but we're, we're, I'm going to get into some examples that will hopefully make that clear. Okay?